Next we'll have Terry Foodie, and she is uh, going to tell you who she's portraying and why she's here. Uh, it'll be uh, neat to hear her because I've never heard her presentation. Uh, so then, and after, I just want to let you know that after everybody is done with their speaking, we'll have a question session for all of them up here, and we'll take turns asking them questions if you want, and we'll have free time to move around. And uh, we have someone passing around a, a, a donation basket for those of you who came into the side gate. And uh, so here, I'll turn it over to Terry. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Hello. My name is Terry, or Teresa. I'm just a poor girl from Lexington. I'm not used to being around these many people. But I'll tell you that I was working as a nurse during the cholera epidemic, the sickness in 1833. And it was just terrible. We were having this nice summer. We were looking forward to the social season. Those that had money were looking forward to the social season. And they had this sickness in Maysville. And they had this sickness, and people from Maysville just ran. And some of them got in stagecoaches and they came down here and they told us how terrible it was there. That people were just dying from this, from this problem with their bowels and their stomachs. And over at Postlewaite's Tavern, Postlewaite's Tavern down there, people got sick. And all along Water Street and Main Street by the town branch, people were getting sick and they were dying. Well, what was this? What was it? What was bringing this here? They said it was this disease from India. They said it was this Asiatic cholera or sporadic cholera or spasmodic or, or something like that. We didn't, we didn't know what it was. Why did it come? Well, the atmosphere. The atmosphere is bad. Miasma. There are bad vapors in the atmosphere. If you breathe this in, you'll get sick. And so over in India and Europe where they got sick first, the vapors went up to the heavens and they blew across the great ocean and they came down on us. And that's, that's what happened. Well, that's what some people say what happened. The, the preacher said it was because of immorality <laughs> and, and drunkenness and, and sin like that. And a girl like me, I, I don't know about those things. <laughs> I don't know about any of those things. But they also said, they also said it was filth and poverty. And, and, and bad things that would make your spirit sad. So we didn't know what it was. Some people said it was contagious. That's why they fled. If they had money, they left town and they fled. Well, the doctors of Transylvania, they were running hither and yon, trying to take care of everybody. One of them, he broke his arm, trying to get his coat on, running down the stairs. And some of them were out of town, and they didn't come back till it was all over. So there weren't that many to take care of. And we had almost 7,000 people living here that summer. And, and 500 died in two months. 500 in two months. I don't know my numbers, but I think that's almost 8%. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure. I didn't go very far in school. So they, if you had money or somebody's not sick, you could say, write a note and send for the doctor or hire a nurse like me, which was no fun because I'll tell you what happens when they get cholera. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of changing the linens. It's a lot of changing the beds. First, they kind of feel kind of giddy in the stomach, the first phase. They feel a little giddy in the stomach. They go, oh, maybe I shouldn't have eaten the watermelon. Maybe I shouldn't have eaten the pork. Maybe I should have drank too much. You know, maybe I shouldn't be out where I shouldn't be. Bell breezings or someplace. <laughs> but I don't know anything about that either. <laughs> I don't know anything. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a single girl, yes. So they feel a little giddy in the stomach, and that doesn't take very long, Francis, does it? And the next thing you know, the next thing you know, they start getting these cramps, and they're either throwing up or they got to go to the privy. They're either vomiting or they have to go to the privy. They're running to the privy during the night, and then they get these cramps, and the cramps go all through here and out the arms and out the legs, and they just curl up like that. And the doctors, they don't know what to do for it, so they say, we've got to clean the stomach up because the next thing that happens is they, ha they lose a lot of dejecta, which means they have diarrhea. <laughs> But once the feces are gone, now we're all adults, most of us, and you've all eaten. So <laughs> once the feces are gone, it looks like rice water because they say their insides are coming out. 
it just goes and goes. And the next thing you know, they, they wrinkle up and their eyes sink back in their heads and their pulse is gone and they don't have, um, they don't have urine coming out anymore and they start to collapse. And you can be dead in two days or the same day it hits you. <coughs> so what do we do? We give calomel, we give calomel for everything, but we give calomel, which is mercurious chloride, it's mercury. <laughs> it comes in a jar like this, it's an old jar. A powder, you might give a 60 grains of calomel, mercury, which is a cathartic, because they have diarrhea and we want to clean it out. And we think the problem is in the heart. The blood is congested. So we've got to clean it out. So we give them this, and they sometimes die. They get sicker. <laughs> so we give them more if the diarrhea doesn't stop. <laughs> and Dr. Yandel over at uh, Transylvania University says we give up to 120 grains of calomel every two to three hours if the diarrhea doesn't stop. Because we've, we have nothing else to give them. And this is what we know to do. Now for the spasms, the contractions, they're so painful. We give them opium. <laughs> opium is, is very helpful for that. And also to get the pulse going again. We want to stimulate their circulation. We want to stimulate their heart. We put mustard plaster or something else over their belly to form a blister that will make them start having their pulse and their heart beating again. They cry out a lot when we treat them. <laughs> <laughs> but here's what happened. One of the young doctors said to me, I walk in this room and I see a person who looks like they're ready for vivisection, vivisection, ready to be cut up for autopsy. And all of a sudden they speak. And I'm amazed because the brain is the last thing to go. All the time they're sinking into collapse and knowing they're dying, their mind is alert and free. It is so sad. And numbers of families die too, and many children. Dame Birchfield talked about the orphanage coming from the other side. So this is what we've been trying to do. We've been trying to take care of the cholera and get rid of the filth and the dirt and we know that it may come again in 1849, so we passed a privy law that said the privies must be four feet deep. I'm not telling you how deep they were before. And they must have at least wood sides around them. And also the pigs are no longer to run free in the streets. Even though some say they eat the garbage. And we're hoping that that up and that people will go to church and they will repent their sins. <laughs> And people will not throw trash out, and we will not have a swampy city. We'll have a clean city again, and maybe we won't die from cholera anymore. I have some papers about it over there. I didn't write it with a pen, a quill pen, because I don't know how to write, but somebody else did this for me. So if you want to see the papers, you may. But we are hoping that the great scourge, whether it comes from Asia or wherever, will not visit our fine city anymore. Thank you. I have patience. Woo!